<laughs> Anywho, <laughs> we saw you last at uh, Royal Fox Horse Haven. Oh, at the Eurofest? Indeed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was right. Like, I always recognise everyone and I'm like, I know, I, I know you're from one of these parties yeah. or shows. I met Day one after a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we thought you were awesome. I loved your song so oh, much. Thank you. Yeah, I loved Joe and Jake because you had to go. Yeah. But they were very cool. But you also called cool too. And obviously it was about um, a family situation, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, your your brother, I believe. Brother-in-law, yeah. Your brother-in-law. It's kind of okay. Okay. Yeah. journey. Yeah, that's right. And that was a cracking song that you had, and you had a lot of feeling in there too. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about a lot this evening, this afternoon. The, the feeling that people put into the songs, it is just awesome. And if you can't put that feeling in, where's it going? Definitely. I think I was uh, that year. I think I was the only one to sing their own song. Um, and hopefully that kind of came across in the performance. And in a way, I wish the BBC kind of championed singer-songwriters a little bit more instead of finding the song and going, okay, we'll find the singer, this is your song, have it. You know, I think if you, it's more of a genuine performance if, if you have that person who has the own song. Do you, do you feel wearied by the BBC not putting enough support in? Um, I did have my reservations. I, I think I was a little bit frustrated at myself that year that I didn't really stick to my own artistic integrity a little bit mm-hmm. and I just kind of trusted them a little bit too much in terms of the, um, the production and the staging a little bit. And usually I play an instrument so I did feel a little bit vulnerable without it. And I said this to them and they, they said no, it's your James Bond moment, just stand there, look down the camera. But looking back, I think parts of it didn't really translate too well to TV. Mm. I'm really critical of everything that I do anyway. Um, I can't really look back at that now because I see everything that I thought went wrong or what I thought should have happened. Um, there's a few sound issues as well, they kind of faded in the backing track, which is why the first few seconds of the performance I'm like, feeling like I don't belong. Yeah, <laughs> as it, indeed you might have not, might have not felt belong because you weren't feeling comfortable in what yeah, you were doing. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I have no regrets, it was, it was my first experience singing live on TV. And I was That's really, quite a thing. Yeah, but I was really grateful because that experience really put into perspective what is important for me as a creative person and not working in an office just to pay the bills <laughs> and that, regardless at all costs I wanted to to succeed as not necessarily just a performer but more as a songwriter which is what I've been delving into the past few years. Well, you've got an album coming out soon I believe it is. Now I, mean, I know you said about this album that you're bringing out. Oracle, isn't it? Yeah. Are you going for things with C L E on the end of the word? Things like miracle. You yeah, know, Oracle. 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 <laughs> oh. Sorry, I was holding that one back. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I crowdfunded that, and around seventy percent of um, the people uh, who contributed were mainly Eurovision fans, or picked <laughs> up since since you decided last year, which was amazing. That's really, really cool. Good. It's really cool that, that although you didn't rep, get to represent the country, you're still held um, in that that sort of regard. Mm. As indeed uh, Selena is as well. We were talking to you earlier. It is there's something about this family, isn't it? That yeah, it does bring people together. Really, like this. Really and sort of, yeah, I think I might be the ginger Nikki French. No, there's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can play that song again as much as you like, because we'll have more happy to hear it. <laughs> With those clocky hands, yeah. At least you need clocky hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was her idea actually, she, she oh, told really? me one time, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to try on the iconic purple coat last year. Did she you? Oh yeah. my god. Me and Martin had a little picture. Hey, you? Yeah. Ooh, 20 right. years old. And you don't work with that young lady. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome, isn't she? She's yeah, awesome. she's great. Do you know what, I first met her at Grand Canaria Pride that I was performing at in 2015 or 2014. And um, somebody said, oh, this is my friend Nikki, she's on your audition. My friend Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it wasn't until she got off and she performed that song, I was like, I know this. And then 12 months later, I remember her here, mm-hmm. at your, the first year of Did stars. she remember meeting you before? Um, she acted like she remembered. She was being very polite, but I believe she did. <laughs> yeah. we, we saw her at... Um, the London Eurovision party, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we got, I've got a VIP ticket, and I went in, and uh, she said, hello James, how are the teeth? So just had them, oh, <laughs> the, uh, not real ones at the moment, yeah. <laughs> working on that, but uh, it was so nice that she was so friendly, and she's so open, and she loves the Eurovision fans. Yeah. Your Eurovision history, so okay, were you into Eurovision beforehand? Did you have an interest in that at all? Um, I did a little bit. Uh, I wasn't. I'll, I'd be. I'll be honest. I wouldn't say I was like a, a big super fan. I had a lot of friends who who were. One of which is coming tonight. He's like the biggest Eurovision geek I've met. You can name a country and a year, and he'll just go so and so. 
Um, so when he found out I was a new side, he just went mental. Oh my god, I'm coming to all the parties, all of the shows. Um, but I'm a, I am a relatively new Eurovision fan, so I have plenty of years to catch up on. You certainly um, do. Yeah. But uh, I, I didn't quite know what I was letting myself in for, shall we say, in terms of the, um, the fans and how big it is across Europe as well. I got to perform in Berlin last year at the MGA Vision Contest and met some amazing, amazing people who have now become friends. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in their early 20s who know, who are like the Eurovision encyclopedias, they know everything about it and they just think that's, that's amazing. And on the flip side of that, you do get the slightly older fans who are a little bit frustrated with how Eurovision is now because they expect it to. They hark back to, to the times when it was like the orchestra and things like that. It would be nice to have an orchestra. Yeah, but, yeah. but you know. But you have to move with the times. Yes, yeah, you've got to move with the times, and that's what the music industry is all about. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you look back at the 1950s versions of Eurovision, that was very, very. Yeah. Um, we're all sitting there in dinner jackets and uh, mm. very, very formal. Uh, Imagine that now. Oh, right. There would be no wash pit, would there? Yeah. <laughs> None of that. All that shouting about and sort of shouting at the, and singing away and yeah. doing what have you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what are you, what are you performing tonight? Are you singing some of your new songs tonight? Yes, yeah, so I've written two songs for Martin Fitcher's new album. Um, so he represented Poland in 2010 and was in their national final this year. He caught up with him, didn't he, at some point? Yeah, we met him a couple of times. Thought yeah. So, yes, yes. Yeah, he's, he's become a really good friend of mine, really, really lovely guy. He asked for a song um, a few months ago whilst I was working away on the cruise ship. And he took that and that was that's going to be the opening track, opening song for his album. Then he asked for a second song, and I'd just written this new sort of Spanishy Latin kind of trap, being inspired by the islands I was going around mm -hmm. the Caribbean at the time. And I said, I do have this other one, but I might keep it for myself because I do like it, and it's quite catchy, and I can see people responding well to it, hopefully. But I'll send it to you and see what you think. And he said, he, he listened to it and he went, okay, I, I want it. I said, okay, well, record a version of it and I'll, I'll see what I think. And he did a really good job of it. He's got a great voice, so I let him have it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this song is now going to be hopefully the lead single for his album. And he's planning on recording it in four different languages. Oh, right. Right. So yeah. he's he's a he's a really talented boy. Um, and I hope he I hope he does well for him because he's he's got a really good following across Europe. He's based in the UK now, and I think he really wants to try and break the UK market. But he's really talented, and he deserves it as well. I think. Do you think the UK market's quite a tricky one to break? Definitely, um, especially if you're not not from here, if you're European and you're trying to break into the UK market, I think it can be quite difficult. But you know what, I listen to the chart in the UK now and every song sounds so similar mm -hmm. in terms of the production, the chord structures, and I think it's quite hard to get the balance between something new and something original, but still something that's commercial and current and people can latch on to as well. So, how can we bring bring the UK audience back to Eurovision and to support it like they used to do well before you were born, like when I was in the 70s, <laughs> right? Okay, like in the days of ABBA and all these wonderful songs and Brotherhood of Man, yeah. and you know, they, it was huge then. I, I think the the you the you decide format. I think that's a, a, a great step in the right direction for the UK. Um, do you think we should have more of that? Yeah, because having just the one show. It's quite limiting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got the likes of uh, Melody Festival, and which goes on for a period of, you know, the lovely, lovely Christopher Bjorkman mm. organising that. He's a great guy. Yeah, isn't it? Um, that kind of format would go down really well because look at the likes of X Factor and The Voice. They go on for weeks and weeks and weeks, um, and they attract millions of viewers every week as well. I think uh, something like that for the UK would go down really well, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it's difficult to change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult to change their, their mindset. Yeah. It's like they don't want us to win in a way, and that's quite frustrating really. Yeah. Um, they're happy to go on support to a point and put money into the competition. Mm -hmm. But when it goes that much further, mm -hmm. I tend to back off. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Do you have any favourite Eurovision songs from the UK? Over the, over the last few years. From the UK, um, well, we're doing, we've got a little surprise tonight, a uh, UK Eurovision medley, as it's the 20th anniversary since we last won and also the 60th since we entered. So I'll be doing Michael Ball, one step at a time. Good way. 
Um, I wouldn't say it was my favourite Eurovision. I thought you were going to be singing Sing Little Birdie. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a good song, that, but um, I'm trying to think what else. I don't want to give away too much of that. No, of course not. Sing no, we're rather surprised. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, look, it was surprised. I'm actually doing a duet with Selena, who was a new designer this year, who, again, I don't think that show did her a lot of justice because she's incredible singer. We were rehearsing yesterday in the studio and her voice is so good. She's got great tone um, and she played with some of their original material but she's playing for the first time tonight and she's so talented. She's a cracking girl. Isn't she? Yeah, really, really lovely. Really lovely. It's been fabulous meeting you. Oh, I've been you. wanting to meet you for a long time. I think you're a bit of a ditch, but that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's been absolutely a pleasure to talk to you, and and we in it, or we know you. We will always we'll always follow you, and uh, yeah. love what you do. Thank you. Thank you.